It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Bucks and the Vikings next on Madden Football. U.S. Bank Stadium holds just under 70,000 spectators, and they've come out in full force for this one. A fantastic atmosphere here in Minneapolis. Today, we've got an intriguing NFC matchup lined up here, as it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Minnesota Vikings. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. Just about time to rock as Toe gets ready to meet Leather. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. Cordero Patterson to return it, bringing it out of the end zone. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they will be led out by their rookie quarterback. If you ask coaches at any level to design their ideal leader of a team, I think they're going to check every box with this guy. He's got the poise to handle responsibility. He stays calm under any kind of pressure, and he brings out the best of his teammates each and every week. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Throw left side, complete to Moss. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. 16 yards on the game's first play and a quick first down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll bring up second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that not sure what happened out there but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw well you know i'm a defender so what am i going to say great defense I'm darn right they did something to disrupt that timing they come up now third and five following the incomplete pass they'll look to throw again Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have the Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Give the rookie another one on this opening drive and a first down with it. A nice start, Charles, for the first-year passer. He's come out, made a few plays, nice plays to begin this contest. He certainly has, and if he finishes off this drive with a touchdown pass, I vote we don't call him rookie anymore. We'll move him right to veteran and continue from there. First down, here's a run with Peterson. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. 12 more yards there and another first down. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. Back to throw now on first down. To the right side and complete to Jefferson. 
That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and that's going to bring up second down. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball, and sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with Tom. Taking it right down Broadway. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. A very solid gain of 27. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical. They've been crisp. And as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door. First and goal. They'll run here with Foreman. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Vikings will jump on top of the game's first score here this afternoon. Like what we saw right there, good running down near the goal line because that was a really good drive. They were able to possess the ball, have some early success moving it downfield, and then clearly the most important thing, finishing things off with the ball in the end zone. Point after, right down the middle. And it's now a 7-0 game. So that drive in total, eight plays. And it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. So here are the Bucks now to take over for the first time. And a look here at the veteran under center, their seventh-year quarterback. I tell you what, when he's on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. Throwing on first down, Williams. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Off the play fake, Williams. And this is caught by Evans. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. No gain on the play there. Second down. I think what we just saw there, partner, was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up third. In every game, we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them, and they get their first sack of the contest. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, that play was certainly a little bit different because on the previous play, he was sacked. This time, protection a lot better. Had time to survey the field and still couldn't find an open receiver. 
Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. It's just a 30-yard punt that time, no return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Here's Peterson as they begin on the ground. We'll get this up to about the 44. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. From the 44-yard line, here's a second down and six. Looking to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Moss. His fourth catch already in this first quarter. It's a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the pro book, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. They'll look to throw now on first down. That's to Dalvin Cook, his running back. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down side to 40. 10 yards and it's good for a Viking first down. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive and now they connect here for another nice game for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well exactly as he drew it up in practice. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. They're all the way to the two-yard line there before crossing over out of bounds. That one goes for 36 yards. Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. Again, he'll drop to throw. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings are off to a 13-0 first quarter lead. Another impressive drive. So they're two for two. Two touchdowns, Charles. A great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words that's really worked its way into our lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, and not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, defense held, forced to punt to get the ball back, and they've played awfully well in this one. Both sides playing at optimum level. The extra point splits the uprights, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. They find themselves in a good size hole here, in a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. They'll start this drive out on the ground. Now he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of four on the first down play. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. 
So the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Looking to throw. Williams. And that one's going to come up a little short. It's incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But they proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Operating from the gun, Williams. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. It, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it, any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so and whether it's the script whether it's you know just what they're going through whether they're seeing different defenses they're gonna have to figure it out as this game moves on good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He finds his man complete. It's Jordan. Now he's loose down the left sideline. Touchdown, Vikings. A great effort there. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Well, still in the first quarter, and look out. I mean, they are on pace for over 80 points in this game. I don't know that they'll get there, CD, but this has been impressive to watch so far. That certainly would be history in the making, wouldn't it, partner? I'm glad we're here to actually watch and see if it actually happens, although, like you, I have my doubts, but they are firmly in control of this game. Extra point right down the middle, and that makes the score 21 to zip. They certainly made quick work of that, ultra quick work. One of the fastest drives you'll ever see, just one play resulting in the touchdown. So how about this for a start? 21-0 here in the first as they kick this one away. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. Well, CD, you kind of feel like they're in a bit of a danger zone right here because now you're down three scores. And I know we're in the first half, but the way this offense hasn't been able to generate anything, you feel like they probably need to get something going on this drive, right? Yeah, and sometimes I overuse that this is an important possession, but I think this has to be the possession where they come up with an answer because only a few teams in league history have ever come back from a four-score deficit. And if they don't score here, that's what they could be facing the next time they get the ball. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. So you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. A well, second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one, closed quickly, and helped force the incompletion. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. This is Wilder. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll stay on the ground. Wilder again. 
And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Now a second and ten. Wilder. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That burst good for 20 and a first down. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. The first down line at the 34 here on third down. Now Wilder. And he works free. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. 10 yards there and a Buccaneer first down. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. Right back to him on first down. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Second down and six now from the 26. They'll run with Wilder. And he's going to be stopped just short of the first down marker at the Vikings 20-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. 21-0, our score after one. Second quarter now, and it's Buccaneer football. As they've got it with a third down and less than a yard. They'll keep it on the ground. Wilder, and he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as that'll be a pickup of about five as they convert on third and inches. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Back to throw. Williams. And he couldn't get that one to his man. Short of him, it's low and incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Second and ten. Looking to throw. Williams. And he comes back with one complete. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Here's Williams from the gun on third down. And that one incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. 
And since the penalty occurred in the end zone, move the ball to the one-yard line. First and goal from the one-yard line. Costly penalty. So the ball's moved to about the one after the penalty. First and goal. They'll try to pound it in with Allstown. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. It's a one-yard touchdown run. And the Buccaneers get a bit closer. Down three scores already. This game was really in danger of getting away from them. They needed a drive like that, especially on the road. Not only to calm themselves, but maybe tamp down the crowd a little bit because everything was against them. As you noted, this game could have gotten away from them very easily, but instead, the calming drive, now they have a little bit more confidence. Okay, we're back in it. All right, we're ready to go. That was impressive. And the defense now needs to reciprocate. Point after, right down the middle. And they'll cut the lead to 21-7. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. From his end zone, here comes Patterson. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. And now out comes Minnesota. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. Throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. The defender certainly didn't forget about him leaking out of the backfield. There's a guy ready and waiting to pick him up in coverage, and that throw had no shot. They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. They'll set up to throw. Middle of the field to Jefferson. Five yards, now it's third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Out of the gun now on third down. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. For the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Throw right side, going to be complete to Moss. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball to come in his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. On second down, Peterson. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. 
Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And it'll find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 21. That'll put him over 100 yards receiving now here in this first half of action. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Now a fake on the jet sweep. And they'll instead run up the middle. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Now this drive, they're two for two on third down conversions, but they need seven yards here. They'll look to throw here. And he is caught. And the Vikings are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Just looking out from a defensive perspective, when you break the huddle in the red zone, tight end is one of the guys you've got a key on because quarterbacks want the ball in their hands fast in this position, and they want to get it to someone. And in this case, he had the play. They just didn't complete it. They'll look to throw again. Well, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Now the try here for the extra point. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. They've seen their 21-0 advantage cut to just seven. So time to go back to work here, first and 10.
They start the drive with Peterson. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. From the 24 now, here's a second down and nine. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and give the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. throw incomplete as well and I feel like my man old Mo momentum might be changing jerseys right now how about what they just got done they scored a touchdown their last drive now here's a three and out maybe momentum's getting ready to creep to the other sideline the Vikings send out their punter as he's on here to punt it away fair catch called for in May but now we'll have to see about the penalty and that hurts if it was running into the kicker wouldn't be a first down roughing it is a first and just think about the differences between the two running into the kicker almost feels inadvertent just a small tap so to speak but when you rough him usually bodies are hitting the ground and flying all different places and the difference is five yards or 15 and in this case that's a big play So a big break. The roughing the kicker called on fourth down leads to first and ten. They run over center with Peterson. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catch in the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. This offense so far on third down, they've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and nine. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. And that's a lesson learned from the previous drive. Last time he forced one, and it turned into a pick six. Here, he knows better, and he just throws that one away. The Vikings send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and the Bucs are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Williams looking to throw on second down. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. It'll go as a gain of four, and now it's third and three. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch and turn up field and pick up the first down. The heavy set out there, three tight ends in the formation for third and three. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. 
Boom, moving from his tight end spot there. Do you think that perhaps the play call was for him? Now after the false start, they need eight yards here on third down. Back to throw. Williams is going to float this one deep right side. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now, standing just outside his own goal line. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. 35 yards that time on the punt, and it will be Vikings ball first and 10. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10. Just shy of midfield at the 48. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. From the 47, it's second and five. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw to Jefferson on the slam. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Starting to rack up the yardage here in this first half. Five catches now and a first down. Now a give running right, it's Cook. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets him back now for second down. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. Second and 14. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. And he'll head out of bounds inside the 10. Mark him down at the 9. A gain of 32 that time. Well, it looked his way quite a bit in this first half, and with good reason. You can see it there. He has such a handful defensively, just too hard to keep him under wraps. It delivers a big play here for this offense. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. And the slot man goes in motion left. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And he powers through the first wave, but he's going to be swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. As a linebacker, you're taught to stay just slightly behind the ball carrier just in case he makes a cutback. But when you find the gap, Shoot it, and he found it all right. Took it straight into the backfield and made the tackle for a loss. Back to throw now on second and 10. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. A pretty rocky start in this game for the guy throwing the ball. Already has thrown one interception. Almost threw a second one right there. All he's doing right now is giving the defense a whole lot of confidence. Six plays got him down here. This is play number seven, third and goal. He'll drop to throw. And Thielen's got it. Touchdown, Vikings. Ten yards on the touchdown pass. And the Vikings go up by two touchdowns. And remember, partner, that's a rookie quarterback back there. Apparently, he's getting the hang of this NFL thing pretty quickly. And three touchdown passes. You're right. He looks comfortable. What are they doing? Anything in particular? Well, they keep talking about making sure they're giving him plays that fit his talents and also maybe shrinking the playbook a little bit. They did tell us that. Bottom line, he's really good. Extra point splits the uprights and a lead now up to 14. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Adam Thielen.
Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled at the 15. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Here now, second and four. Looking to throw, Williams. And that throw behind his man, he missed him, incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They're giving him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Williams now from the gun on third down. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And a fair catch is taken here a step or two inside the 45-yard line. And just a 30-yard punt that time. And they will take over first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Short throw into the hands of Jordan. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's a hell shred of defense. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Peterson. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Second down and three. Again, he'll drop to throw. His throw incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Back to throw again. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And the Vikings are going to have first and goal coming up as they're able to convert there on third and two. Everything's going right here in this first half, and they've got a good lead. And part of that can be attributed to their success on third downs. This is another conversion here. 
and they can look to really open things up now with this first and goal. Now we've got movement up front, and I think this is going to be on Minnesota. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. He'll look to throw. This is caught. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. And Thielen's got it. Touchdown, Vikings. A great play there in the final seconds of the first half. And the Vikings will extend their lead here just before halftime. So whatever happened to rookie quarterbacks taking time to adjust to life in the NFL? Because this guy looks like he's been doing it for about, what, seven years? Four touchdown passes? That's not something rookies are supposed to be doing with the ease in which he's doing it. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. So just eight ticks remaining here in the first half as they'll kick this one away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we've reached halftime here in Minnesota with the Vikings on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome, everyone, to our Creative Village studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So after a very one-sided first half, what will the second half bring as we are back underway on EA Sports? From the end zone, here comes Williams. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. And you have to think, Charles, down three scores already. They need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance. And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, efficient, get the ball into the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. First and 10, and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 
83 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Pretty explosive run on that inside handoff, and when you're a runner of his caliber, you don't need a big crease. You really don't, but also what we're seeing is an offensive line that's taking charge at the point of attack, aren't we? Not only are they controlling the initial contact, they're actually utilizing what they call the strain, the next two to three seconds to continue to move people. Now Williams on first and 10. Evans has it left side. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that will bring up second down. Now a handoff up the middle. Wilder. Still going inside the 20. And he's going to get this all the way down to the Vikings' 14-yard line. Only took him three plays, and they're already in the red zone, just like that. There was a great article in the paper yesterday about how he likes to run angry. <laughs> plays like that, you can feel it, can't you? As long as he doesn't drive angry, we're okay. <laughs> because when he's on the field, that anger works for him. It fuels him, it powers him, and the end result runs like that. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. A good solid game there on first down, but the defense has to be happy they didn't let it pop for anything bigger. Second and seven. Back to throw. Williams. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The pocket collapsed around him. I know we talk about it a lot, but a QB has to have that sixth sense, does he? He really does. And I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame. And any time he didn't get rid of the ball within this, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is, just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the amount you have, make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And pretty good pursuit there defensively. He's brought down, no gain on the play. Second down coming up. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. They'll look to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Jordan. Look at the big man rumble. Touchdown, Vikings. A big play there. An 80-yard touchdown as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. Brandon, remind me again, this is a rookie quarterback we're seeing? A rookie indeed. I mean, because my eyes are telling me something I'm having trouble believing. Five touchdown passes. He's thrown five in this game. Are you kidding me? The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. And that'll increase their lead to 28. The quick strike ability certainly intact there. Two plays, 80 yards to score it. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD, and if they cannot score here, 
this one's pretty much all but over. Are right, you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, it's, let's just say it's been unusual. Second down and a yard. Up the middle they go. Wilder. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. He can muster only a yard there, and they'll be left with a third and very short. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Looking to throw. Williams. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Well, a lot of ground left to make up, obviously. A lopsided contest, and we're already in the third quarter. And they won't get it all back in one play or one drive. That's cliche, but it's true, Charles. If they can just maybe get plays like that and get a little momentum built, they can get the scoreboard a little closer. And can you add some blinders to the cliche, meaning keep these guys from looking at the scoreboard because that doesn't help them at all right now. Their focus needs to be on finishing every drive with points and playing mistake-free football from here on out. Here's second and ten. A quick throw caught by Godwin. Call it a gain of three on the play. And now third down and six to go. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Ball had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. Well, this offense, this team, they are rolling right now, Charles. They've scored on three straight possessions. You look at the scoreboard, and they pretty much right now got this thing on cruise control. Yeah, and this is that time of game where you and I have to be prepared, right? Isn't this kind of like that empty the bucket time where you have to go into your blowout material and make sure we have some different things? That's what we're staring at right now, the way this one is going. And able to get it across the 20 before they get to it. Give them 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give them the first down. This is just more of the same. This defense has had no answer on a lot of these throws. They've let these receivers run wild. And here's another completion for good yardage. Back to throw now on first down. He finds his man complete. It's Moss. And he's taken down right away at the 39-yard line. It's another first down as they look his way again, this time 19 yards. And if anyone thinks they're just going to tuck their horns in and pull back off the throttle a little bit, you can forget it. Even with this big third quarter lead, I think this team's going to continue to take their shots downfield, and there's another completion. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. A tenth carry now for Peterson. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. 
They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards a carry at the moment. From the 42-yard line, here's second down and seven. They run again with Peterson. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. 42 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. They'll look to throw here on first down. He's going to go for a big play downfield. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. A great effort there. 43 yards. And the Vikings have taken a five-touchdown lead. Boy, another score. This lead gets even bigger. And, Charles, we haven't even hit the fourth quarter yet. Well, forget the deficit, right? They're really not going to cut into that a heck of a lot. But how can they get out of here with some dignity? Can they get a stop or two? Can they make a play on offense themselves? Anything to start to feel better about what's happened to them here in this one. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Back now comes Tampa Bay. Now we're still in the third quarter, so there's some time to kind of clean this up and make it look more respectable. Now a win, that's probably gone out the window, Charles, but... I don't know. Do you look at this as a time to just improve and maybe start to look towards the future? I think you have to find something to play for, something to grasp onto until the clock runs out. But, Brandon, we've been around this game a long time. This is an outlier. You don't get many blowouts like this no matter how the game looks on paper going in. This one has turned out to be everyone's worst nightmare realized. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Operating from the gun, Williams. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. On first down, Wilder, and he'll take this ahead for about four, second down coming up. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Here's Williams to throw on second down. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. So many things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. 
Operating from the gun, Williams. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Williams looking to throw on second down. And he'll take this from 147 yard line to the other. A gain of six. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Williams now on third down. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. There's a nice pickup right there. And after watching that play, I'm thinking about all the lost opportunities that they've had so far in this game. But right now, just focus on continuing to move the ball the way they did on the last play. Now a play fake here on first down. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Back to throw. Williams eluding the pressure right. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Now, fourth quarter, certainly not enough time for a comeback, but nice to see them making use of the time remaining to try and make this one a little more respectable. Yeah, I think the ultimate goal, good execution, be crisp, be sharp, and find a way to put some points on the board to make this thing look just a little bit. Touchdown! from four yards out. And the Buccaneers get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open in the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play and they got it done there. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Patterson going to bring this out of the end zone. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. And out now come the Vikings. Well, they don't really need the points here, Charles, given what we're looking at on the scoreboard, but 
They've scored on three consecutive possessions, three consecutive drives, and I'm sure that they would like to keep that streak going here and continuing to pour it on. And things have gotten that way in the NFL, haven't they, partner? Because in the old days, people would, you know, they'd get off the gas a little bit, right? But now people continue to accelerate, but we'll see what they decide to do as they come out for this one. But the way that this game has gone, they've got to be awfully happy with their execution overall. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. 57 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. So fourth quarter, a nice run there to start this drive. Charles, what do you think the split will be here between run and pass? Well, partner, I think it'll lean towards the run, but this is also not a time where you just totally do that. You still have to possess the ball, move the sticks, and keep the clock moving as well. So they'll run their offense, but yeah, when they have a chance to run it, they'll do that a little bit more. A bit of a jump there, CD. He breaks the line, and that'll be five yards. And you've got to stay more disciplined than that, Brandon. That's just a free gift to the offense. They will come up on a first and five following the encroachment penalty. Again, Peterson. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. The two big plays right in succession as this one goes for 27. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Up the middle, it's Peterson. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. On second down, Cook. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show up their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage, they are powering through, and they're controlling this game. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. From the 23, here's second and six. They'll try the middle with Peterson. And they're knocking on the door now. There's a good run there. They're going to take this to about the 10-yard line. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. Well, we're beyond the tone setting right now. This guy's been the bell cow all day, and they'll continue to rely on him to move the chains, drain the clock, and lead his team. Back to throw here. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football, and it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. The defense, they were swarming that time and ultimately got to him before he could get rid of the football and knocked it free. And don't you feel just a little bit of sympathy for him back there, though? So much going on, so much swirling around. He's trying to find someone downfield. He's trying to move around to find an open target. Sometimes you forget the number one thing, take care of the football. Now Williams, following the fumble recovery, he'll throw. And that one to the right side and incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Here's Williams. 
to throw again. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up third. But one thing I do know, these guys on defense, they don't want this game to end. They're winning by multiple touchdowns. They've shut down the opposing quarterback in a big way, and they're still picking up sacks as we approach the end of this one. Throwing on third and long, Williams. And this one is incomplete. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Now a fair catch taken just across midfield, maybe by a yard or two. So a change of possession here on the punt. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50, first and 10. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. Another tote for the workhorse here this afternoon, Peterson. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 125 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, He's the guy they've turned to, and it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Throw left side complete. That's Moss. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. Well, there's absolutely been no stopping this offense today. They already have the big lead, obviously. Here in the fourth quarter, they could coast to the end, but right now they're not passing up any chances to put up some garbage time yardage. And, partner, why would they? Because who knows the next time you'll be playing as well as you have today. When you're in that zone, you go ahead and take full advantage of it. You don't worry about your opponent. You just worry about what you're doing. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, Realize he had support behind him and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Touchdown, Vikings! A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings start to open this lead even wider here in the fourth. And a decisive advantage became even more decisive. They already had the win in hand, but they keep pressing the tempo, and they pile on with another touchdown reception. Would you consider that touchdown a reward to all the tight ends on their roster for their effort today? Not just running their routes, but all the time they spent in the trenches laying down blocks, doing the little things to help that offense succeed. And for doing all of that, they definitely want one of their tight ends to get a touchdown to really seal this blowout. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. We said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And, partner, they do have some good news, though. 
This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. Guys with his talent in the pocket aren't supposed to be getting hit like this, and you know an intense conversation with the offensive line is going to occur after this one. Might not be from him, but the offensive line coach will have plenty to say about this game. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Down several scores and playing behind the chains is not the way to have success in this one. Right now, if you're the offensive line, your big concern, protecting your quarterback and giving him a chance to try and throw something downfield to pick up the needed yardage. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now a handoff up the middle. Wilder, and that's not going to get it done. He'll come up well short of the first at about the 21. He's able to chew up eight yards on the carry there, but still fourth down upcoming. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. He'll take it at the 42. So possession goes over here on the punt. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. You just kind of feel for the defense right now. This deficit, they have not been able to stop them the entire game, Charles. And some hands on hips, some long faces out there on the defensive side. Oh, they're like, oh my gosh, we got to face these guys again here. Yeah, people don't understand how hard it is when you're on the side that's being dominated to keep your head up and continue to play hard. And that's what they're going through right now, trying to find that pride inside of them to allow them to continue to fight, even though they are down huge in this game. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. So from just across the midfield stripe, here's second and nine. They toss it left side to Peterson. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got a touchdown, Vikings! A great play there. 50 yards, and the Vikings continue to pour it on here in the fourth. Well, they mentioned this week, Charles, they had a couple kinks on offense that they wanted to fix. I would say they're pretty well fixed. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. I mean, just about everything they've run has been successful in this one. And if I'm the defensive coordinator, I'm done with this, right? I have no answers for anything. In fact, I probably send a note to the clock operator. Let it run. Extra point splits the uprights. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, 
They were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Williams slow on target to Godwin here. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it's second down. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Ball on the 27. Here's second and four. Looking to throw. Williams. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. Another pass attempt, another incompletion, and they're just a little over 100 yards passing here in this game, so defensively, pretty good job. Definitely, because they were never really able to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. So a lot of credit to the defensive game plan, and especially the execution. Back to throw, Williams. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. And the defense coming through on third down, a loss of seven to bring up fourth. We all know he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, but definitely not today. His team trailing by multiple touchdowns and a late sack, just a parting gift from the defense for him to take back to the locker room with him. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and that will come the offense as they take over. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. I'm just wondering, do they want to add on to this gigantic lead? My guess, given how they like to play and how explosive this offense is, Charles, that they're not content being up by this margin. They probably want more. And if they do go and get more, Oh, look out. At that point, let's just aim the camera for the post-game handshake because that one might be a little bit on the tense side the way that this one is turning out. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. Carry number 20 now for Peterson. He had a great strong move, but he'll still be stopped shy of midfield. Four yards on the pickup there, and now they're left with a third and eight. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. throw but it misses the target incomplete but this juncture cd you normally see teams pack in the passing game they've got the huge lead not them though they're still taking their shots i remember reading in past history there was a college football coach in the hall of fame whose nickname was close the gates of mercy but he wasn't really big on that he was big on going ahead and scoring he's kind of reincarnated right here we're watching it in front of us so out come the bucks now well, CD, it's all window dressing at this point. I mean, the best they can do is end the game with a nice drive to maybe build some momentum to move forward into their next contest. Yeah, and with how lopsided this game has been, even one score might not do a lot of cosmetic good on the scoreboard, partner, because it's just about looking forward at this point. Get a touchdown here, give yourself some positive momentum and reps to focus on when you get back to practice in the next couple of days. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him, and after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. To throw again, Williams. And his throw here is incomplete. This defense has passed its first two tests by forcing back-to-back -back incompletions. They know that there's probably another throw coming on third down. Let's see if they decide to force the issue by sending people on a blitz. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Looking to throw. Williams. He's going to let it fly. 
That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And he'll take it just outside the 40. A 39-yard punt, a return of five. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. They'll start out here with a jet sweep, and that is not fooling anyone. He never had a chance to turn the corner there, and they'll go backwards right away. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. Handoff comes to Peterson. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. Well, fans usually love to see scoring, and there's no shortage of it today. What a dominant showing from an offense that was truly playing at an elite level in this contest. Partner, this game was over a long time ago, and you noticed they did not want to slow down anything. Absolutely a dream scenario for everyone on that offense, and they took advantage of every second. Guaranteed popcorn for everyone in their film session. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long from Minneapolis.